What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study today. We're going to be going through Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 18. Hallelujah. Before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, the body and soul. This first death is just the body. Second death is body and soul. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on the cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us, and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away, and we receive his righteousness, his perfection that he lived out. Repent. And believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or a change of mind. To truly turn to God. To give your life to him. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And rose three days later. And through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life. If you believe that. And you truly turn to him for the forgiveness of your sins. And ask him to forgive you. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit. And he will give you eternal life. The Holy Spirit changes your heart and leads you to follow him. The Holy Spirit gives you wisdom, power, and many things. But if you truly believe and you truly turn to God and ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you, he'll give you the Holy Spirit, and he will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And uh, again, pray for the families of those who were killed at this uh, AstroFest music festival uh, there was something very wicked that happened um, I believe it was uh, I'm not going to go too much into it I was thinking about doing a video on it but God led me not to at least not right now um, but there's something uh, I believe it was a sacrifice I believe it was a uh, satanic ritual and um, and uh, I'll just leave it at that but pray for the families of the victims pray for those who are injured there's still many who are injured and uh, may uh, I've heard there's people on life support still so pray for them pray for healing and pray that these people would come to know Jesus, because this is uh, what it's all about, the Word of God, the Bible, and Jesus, and the truth of Him. This is why all these, uh, you know, these celebrities sell out to Satan, because he offers them, God allows him to offer them uh, fame and riches, and they sell their souls for the fame and riches. But Jesus said, what is it worth to gain the whole world and lose your soul? This life is short. Anyone could be gone at any time. God could snatch the life out of you right now. Get right with Jesus. You will receive eternal life. Now let's get into Deuteronomy 18. And we're also going to see a prophecy of Jesus here in Deuteronomy 18, from Moses. The Levitical priests, the whole tribe of Levi, shall have no portion or inheritance with Israel. So, you know, we know the tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel, were given different territories. The Levites um, didn't have territories. They didn't have a territory, but they had uh, cities within the other territories. So that they wouldn't have... Uh, so that they wouldn't have the animals, the flocks, and the fields to, to do the farming and the livestock. Because their focus was to be on the service of the tabernacle, the service for God. The Levitical priests, the whole, tri the whole tribe of Levi, shall have no portion or inheritance with Israel. They shall eat Yahuwah's offerings by fire and his portion. And uh, so... We know the Levites, we went through this in Leviticus. 
they would actually eat of the the sacrifices. As far as the burnt offering, the burnt offering was skinned. The Levites would have the skin part, and the rest of it was burnt. Uh, as far as the sin offering, I would have to go back and look at the sin offering again. Guilt offerings, they had guilt offering. Uh, again, I'd have to go back and review that. Um, the peace offerings, the Levites would have part of it. Uh, and then the people would actually, the people who offer the offering, the peace offerings, whether it's just a free will offering or a votive offering to make a vow to God, uh, they would eat part of it. The people who offered it, the priests would offer actually offer it, but the people who came to make an offering to God would have part of it to eat as well. The Levitical priests, the whole tribe of Levi, shall have no portion or inheritance with Israel. They shall eat Yahuwah's offerings by fire in his portion. They shall have no inheritance among their countrymen. Yahuwah, the Lord, is their inheritance, as he promised them. Now this shall be the priests due from the people, from those who offer a sacrifice, either an ox or a sheep, a cow or a sheep, of which they shall give to the priest the shoulder and the two cheeks and the stomach. And I believe this is more specifically referring to the free will offerings the, or the, the peace offerings. And which uh, peace offerings are broken down in, into different types. So there's free will offerings and the votive offerings. And I believe this would be referring to the uh, free will offerings. At least uh, that's my current understanding on, on this verse. Now this shall be the priest due from the people, from those who offer a sacrifice, either an ox or a sheep, of which they shall give to the priest the shoulder and the two cheeks and the stomach. And then they would eat of it as well when it comes to the free will offerings. You shall give him the first fruits of your grain, your new wine and your oil, and the first shearing of your sheep. And so that that would be the tithe. So this is actually referring, this part is referring to the tithe to the Levites. The Everyone would give a 10% tithe out of their, uh, out of their animals, out of the fruit of the ground, the grain, the, the, the grapes, the wine, and the shearing of the sheep, the, the wool. They would give uh, the tithe to the Levites. This was given to God, but the Levites would receive it because they didn't have their own. And they received God's portion. For Yahuwah your God has chosen him, Levi, and his sons from all your tribes to stand and serve in the name of Yahuwah forever. Hallelujah. Now if a Levite comes from any of your towns throughout throughout Israel where he resides, and comes whenever he desires to the place where Yahu, which Yahuwah chooses, which ended up being Jerusalem, then he shall serve in the name of Yahuwah his God, like all his fellow Levites who stand there before Yahuwah, the Lord. They shall eat equal portions, except for what they receive from the sale of their father's estates. Then... They, I mean, so basically they would receive equal portions from the rest of the people, but from what they sell from their, the, from the estates of their fathers, from their, um, their family, family's inheritance before they went into the land, they, uh, that would be theirs. When you enter the land which Yahuwah your God gives you, you shall not learn to imitate the, de the detestable things of those, of those nations. There shall not be found anyone among you who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. And this was child sacrifice. They would literally burn their kids in the fire to these statues, to, these, uh, to the same God or... Let me take back God, same individual who the celebrities and stuff still worship today. They do have the pyramid and the, the one eye, the one eye symbolism. We saw a lot of that with this Travis Scott uh, concert. And I'm not going to go too much in, 
into that right now, but um, that one eye symbolism is goes back to the same gods in the Old Testament. Uh, all based, all goes back to Nimrod in Genesis chapter ten. Um, but when the people were scattered and formed the different nations, he became known as this god of different names depending on the culture. But uh, this is the same sun god that they they worship today. Same one eye symbolism. Uh, same, it all goes back to him. Um, and they're awaiting his return as the Antichrist. And this is why on one of the posters, one of the Travis Scott posters, it said, when the end when the end comes, it's just the beginning. Because when the end comes, when the tribulation starts, that's just the beginning for them. Because that's when their king shows up. That's when their God shows up. The Antichrist, the beast. But it's it's wickedness. Uh but they they would they would uh back then this is what it's referring to, the child sacrifice. They would uh, offer up, they would burn their kids in the fire to this God, to this false God, who was uh, Nimrod, who was going to be the beast of revelation. They would offer child sacrifice and they would literally burn their kids. And um, this still happens today, just not openly like it used to. Because back then there, there wasn't like a society... There wasn't uh, media like there is today, social media, and um, media in general, and the technology to, you know, the whole world would, uh, at least most people, would would be against them and turn against them and revolt if uh, they knew this stuff was actually going on. But this stuff goes on behind closed doors. Uh, the rich and famous still, still sacrifice children, and even uh, they... There's even uh, Satanists and witches and warlocks who do uh, do rituals and stuff at abortion clinics because they're, they're offering these kids up to the devil and up to Nimrod, uh, these babies who are being slaughtered. When you enter the land, when you, when you enter, enter the land which Yahuwah your God gives you, you shall not learn to imitate the detestable things of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. One who uses divination, one who practices witchcraft, one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who casts a spell, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. And so all these are uh, pretty similar. I, I actually looked up the definition of some of these and I want to read real quick it, said, it mentions divination, witchcraft one who inter interprets omens, a sorcerer one who casts a spell which is also witchcraft uh, a medium, a spiritist and those two I didn't look up but, but I will so let me just go through some def definitions here divination uh, the practice of seeking knowledge of, of, of the future or the unknown by supernatural means, like through spirits, through demons. Uh, some stuff that, uh, you know, psychics do. It's divination. Witchcraft. Traditionally, the ex exercise or invocation of alleged supernatural powers to control people or events Practices typically, typically involve sorcery or magic. So witchcraft practices involve sorcery or magic. Sorcery is another one that was mentioned there. Sorcery, the use of magic, especially black magic. Definition of black magic. Magic involving a supposed invocation of evil spirits for evil purposes. And uh, let me look up the definition of medium. Let 
Let's see. Uh, medium, the way of communicating. Um, let's see. Person claiming to be in contact with the spirits of the dead and to communicate between the dead and the living. And let me go look up spiritist real quick. One second. Oh, a person who claims to speak with the spirits of the dead. So kind of the same thing as a medium. And witchcraft is a use of sorcery or magic. Sorcery is a use of magic, uh, black magic. And, you know, some, some people think they're doing... Uh, and actually, let me read. It's interesting. I looked up uh, something right here. The difference between black magic and witchcraft. Uh, this is a... Uh, the answer is apparently from a third degree Wiccan high priest, uh, which says Witch witchcraft is a magical practice that has no specific beliefs or traditions. Black magic is a label for the use of magic that may be seen as bad in most situations, though because the terms good and bad are subjective, their uh, their meanings would change depending on the circumstances they're set in. If one of my friends is being bullied, I may cast a bonding spell to prevent them from being from the harming my friend this spell this would work by the spell causing something to come up in the bully's life which in turn would cause the bully to become so busy with their own life they they no longer have time to bully my friend and so th there's different ways that uh so basically it's, it's using demons spirit uh witchcraft and sorcery magic it's uh doing different spells, doing different uh, rituals and uh, basically summoning demons and causing and causing demons to uh, having demons do different things which can be it can be a curse, it can be a spell it can be um, you know I'm not the biggest expert on this, but, you know, it could be a lot of things. It, as she mentioned right there, it can be something just makes, make you get something come up in your life to where you're, to, to where you're busy. The enemy can do stuff like this to where we don't even realize it's the enemy doing it to where we just get real busy with things in life and aren't able to keep up with the ministry or aren't able to keep up with, uh, stay focused on God and, and stay close to him, stay in the word. And, you know, it can be subtle. Uh, sometimes it's extreme, sometimes it's real spiritual warfare, um, temptations, uh, a lot of, it can be a lot of things. And, uh, you know, no type of witchcraft is good, even if the person thinks they're doing it for good purposes. It's, you're messing with demons and you're causing, you're using demons to do different, uh, different things. So let me read through this uh, again back here in Deuteronomy. When you enter the land which Yahuwah your God gives you, you shall not learn to imitate the detestable things of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, who uses div one who uses divination, one who practices witchcraft, or one who interprets omens. And that's one I didn't look up, but... 
Oh, actually, let me just look up Omen. Uh, believe to portend a future event. Uh, to foreshadow, for example, dark, the dark clouds were considered a bad omen. So one who inter interprets different things that happen as uh, basically prophesying. Basically someone who is prophesying uh, not of God. Of, uh, you know, of demons, basically. One who practices witchcraft, one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who casts a spell, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. And so, you know, this can be, I mean, the word says, one who calls up the dead. And we see that this was uh, the case with uh, Samuel. He went to a medium, I mean, uh, Saul went to a medium to call up Samuel. From the dead and his soul came up um, so I mean that stuff is real I don't believe there are really human spirits or human souls floating around um, like ghosts but they can be caught up at least uh, you know I'm no expert on all this but According to the word, they can be called up, or one who calls up the dead, or whoever does, for whoever does these things is detestable to Yahuwah, and because of, of these detestable things, Yahuwah your God will drive them out before you. You shall be blameless before Yahuwah your God, the Lord your God. You shall bl you shall be, shall be blameless before Yahuwah your God. For those nations which you shall dispossess, listen to those who practice witchcraft and to diviners. But as for you. Yahuwah your God has not allowed you to do so. Yahuwah your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you. And this is a prophecy of Jesus. And there's a few more lines of it. But this is speaking about Jesus. And we're going to um, go through a couple similarities between Moses and Jesus. Uh, I'm not going to go through an extensive list right now. But there's a lot of similarities between Jesus and Moses. I'll just probably mention a couple. Um, but this is prophecies of Jesus. When Moses, Moses prophesied about the one who is to come up and be a prophet like him. Because Moses was a prophet. And he was prophesying right here. Yahuwah your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you. From your countrymen. You shall listen to him about Jesus this is according to all that you have asked Yahuwah your God in Horeb on the day of the assembly saying let it speaking about uh, when they were at Mount Sinai and God came down on, the, on Mount Sinai and the fire and the cloud this is according according to all that you asked of Yahuwah your God in Horeb on the day of the assembly saying let me not hear again the voice of Yahuwah my God let me not see this great fire anymore or I will die Yahuwah said to me, They have spoken well. I will raise up a prophet from among their countrymen like you. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak to them all that I command them. And again, this is uh, speaking about Jesus. And there's a ton of people walking back behind me. It's like the third person since the start of the video. Um, all people I've never seen before in my life. No, spies most likely. And to be honest, you know, agents. This is according to all, and this is every day. Every day I see see new people walk by that I've never seen before in my life. I don't, not even from around here, I don't think. This is according to all that you asked of Yahuwah your God in Horeb on the day of the assembly. Actually, let me, I skipped a, I went backwards. I will raise up a prophet from among their countrymen like you. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak to them all that I command him. 
It shall come about that whoever will not listen to my words, which he, he will speak in my name, I myself are, will require it of him. And, and you remember Jesus said, I don't, I don't speak of my own, I don't speak my own words. I don't speak of my own will, but I speak what, what I hear from the Father. This is what Moses said was going to happen. I will raise up a prophet from among their countrymen like you, and I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak to them all that I command him. This is, this is Jesus, the Father speaking through the Son. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall he shall command them all that I, he shall speak to them all that I command him. He said, "I only speak what I receive from the Father." It shall come about that whoever will not listen to my words, which he shall, which he shall speak in my name, I myself will, will require it of him. But the prophet who speaks a word presumptuously in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or which he speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. So anyone who comes up and prophesies something, that this is going to happen or that's going to happen, that God didn't command them to speak, and it and it's false, Or that he speaks in the, name, in the name of other gods, he shall die. Being a false prophet is very serious. And uh, and we need to be careful with what we say. If we think something's going to happen, and you know, I, I myself, uh, if I don't have, I mean, God has shown me a lot. God has helped me understand a lot of the scriptures, a lot of the prophecies. But if I, but if there's something that I'm not sure about, I'll, I'm not going to say this is the word of the Lord. This is going to happen, or that's going to happen. I'll say this. My, I, I believe this and that. I believe that. I believe this. Uh, my, this is my current understanding. But if I say this is this, that is that then I believe that's something that God has truly shown me and has shown me to say. But I'm not calling myself a prophet or anything. It's just uh, God has given me, allowed me to, allowed me to prophesy a little bit uh, in regards to the prophecies of the Bible. Not prophesy, uh, not say, uh, not just look at somebody saying, this, this is going to happen in your life or that's going to happen. But uh, in regards to what the Word of God says is going to happen, what the prophet prophecies say. Well, we need to be very careful, because uh, it says, "But the prophet who speaks a word presumptuously in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or which he speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die." You may say in your heart, "How will we know the word which Yahuwah has not spoken?" When a prophet speaks in the name of Yahuwah, in the name of the Lord, which his name is Yahuwah, at least that's one pronunciation, my understanding of the pronunciation. When a prophet speaks in the name of Yahuwah, and the thing does not come about or come true, that is the thing which Yahuwah has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. One more time, when a, spot, when a prophet speaks in the name of Yahuwah, if the thing does not come about or come true, that is the thing which Yahuwah has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously, you shall not be afraid of him. And uh, there are many people who, you know, as far as, you know, there are many people who prophesied that Trump was going to win the election. And they said he he is gonna win. There's a bunch of pastors and so-called prophets and people of God who said Trump Trump is gonna win this election. God has shown me this, and they were proven wrong. You shall not be afraid of him. You shall not be afraid of them. I I myself I thought he was gonna win the election. 
I said, and I said, I believe he's going to win the election because I believe God has shown me that he's going to be in power when the end begins. And so I thought he, it was going to be another term. And, uh, and uh, that he was going to win the election. I didn't say he is going to win the election. I didn't say for sure. I said I believe so. Because he's going to be in power. At least from what I believe God has shown me. Through the prophecies. I believe he's going to be in power. Uh, when the end begins. When the tribulation starts. But. God had a different plan. And I, I still believe he is. I believe he's going to be back in power when the tribulation starts. And uh, until God shows me otherwise, I believe that's, I believe that's, uh, I believe that to be true. I believe that's what he showed me. Um, I just thought, I thought it was just going to, I thought it was going to be consecutive terms, terms, but God has, God is delayed. God is delayed for the salvation of many. And that's why uh, Biden got in. But uh, Trump will be back in power. And I'll continue to say it unless God shows me otherwise, because I believe that's what he has shown me. Um, but I didn't go out and say, Trump is Trump is going to win the election. God has shown me this, because God didn't show me that. I do believe God has shown me that he will be in power when the tribulation starts. He will bring about the tribulation. But... That's on God's timing, not ours. But there are many people who were shown to be false prophets by saying, just a big guy in my car, by saying that he's going to win the election and that God has shown them that. But, uh, you know, we need to be very careful with what we say, our words are powerful. And especially if we're speaking in, in the name of God. We need to be very careful with the things that we say. Think with the things that we do. Because uh, being a false prophet is very serious. That's very serious. And uh, we're representatives of God. And we cannot speak falsely in his name. But that's the end of, let me make sure that's the end. I believe that's the end of Deuteronomy chapter 18. Yep. That's the end of Deuteronomy chapter 18. Brothers and sisters, let's stay strong in faith. Let's endure to the end no matter what we have to go through here in these last days. Let's be prepared for the return of the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. The judgment of God is coming upon this earth soon. And whoever is not ready is going to be destroyed in his wrath. A quarter of the world is going to die as a result of uh, what happens in the first four seals. And that's even before the earthquake. Um, you know, destruction is coming upon this world and there's only one way out. There's only one way to return to life. This world is coming to an end very soon. We are not, if, if you're my age or younger or or even a little bit older, we're not going to grow old on this earth. Not on this, uh, not unless you survive the tribulation time and, and, uh, still have your natural body afterwards, which is highly unlikely, especially here in America. America's going to, America's going to get it. America's going to be destroyed. And the only way out the only way to eternal life, the only way to live longer than the next couple years is to give your life to Jesus Christ. He will forgive you if you truly turn to him for the forgiveness of your sins. He died on the cross for your sins in order to pay the penalty for all, in order to take on the punishment for all that we've done wrong. And it's only through faith in him and what he did on the cross that we can receive forgiveness of sins and be made right with God and receive eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. We'll give you life to Jesus today. That's the end of Deuteronomy 18. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. And again, keep uh, keep the people who are injured 
in your prayers. Keep the families of those who lost somebody in your prayers. And that's only one event. There's people all around the world who are suffering. So let's keep them all in our prayers. And most of all, let's be right with God and help others to get right with God. Love y'all. Shalom.